Hey everybody, welcome to Distance Learning Week 3. It's time for your third photo challenge. Special thanks this week to Katie Wilmer, who not only suggested the theme and techniques, but also put together most of this presentation that guides you through learning it. So let's get started right away so you can figure out what you'll be doing. The theme this week is health and humor, and the technique you'll be using is either framing or leading lines. The photo will be due Thursday night yet again, so you can get feedback on Friday. And the instructions for turning it in, as well as the template for the assignment, are on Google Classroom. The quote that Katie picked out is, The framing of what there is by the mind is what you call beauty. So it really is taking a look at what we see and deciding to focus on something and direct our focus at something that makes it beautiful. It's a great quote. So what is health and humor? The general idea is we're looking at well-being, either your physical well-being or your emotional or mental well-being, staying entertained and also healthy in one way or another uh, during this time. Health could be positive or negative. It could be things that are tempting you to not have great health. I could imagine, you know, a, a photo of ice cream or something like that that's tempting you, um, or it, shoes that you haven't worn in a while. But also the idea of keeping up with your physical and emotional well being. That can be positive, it could be negative as well. So get creative with how you think about it. The two techniques are framing and leading lines, and we've put together a presentation with several examples, but you're either going to be creating a frame within the rectangular frame of your photo, or you'll be helping your viewer's eyes move around your photo using lines in the environment. Let's start with leading lines. So you're going to be using lines that are naturally occurring in an environment to direct a reader's attention. How can you do this? Here's one that Katie found where you have the lines in the image all directing you to the subject of the image, whether it's the railing, the mesh netting, or the bridge itself. The other way you could do it is to just to simply start them in a place and have the lines move their attention. So here we are right here. This is my son, a photo I took years ago, but I love it because of the leading lines. The lines on all the boxes direct you to the idea right here, his central focus. Elena Russell took this photo. You start here with the subject and then follow the lines of the road. She did a brilliant job of placing him right on the lines and letting the lines of the road do the work to move the viewer through the photograph. Here's one that Katie found. Your eye starts at the beginning and then naturally moves up here. If it started down here, then it probably followed the line. So you're going to be taking advantage of that and allowing people to move through your photograph. Here's one that I took with a similar feel. You start here and then move back through the photograph. It isn't always a matter of having the lines move you to the focus, but you could start with the focal point and move with the lines. Here's another one where you could use lines to show connection or relationship. So the mini golf line connects one subject with another subject. The lines from the golf clubs connect to each other and uh, do a good job of creating balance, so you're combining themes. The other technique you could look at is framing, which might be easier because if you have more control of your environment, then you can create interesting frames. So you can either do that with distinct shapes or rough edges. Here's two that Katie found. This is one frame. Please note, you'll see it later, but you don't have to keep the frame entirely in your photograph. So it comes out here and that's totally fine. This is a really distinct shape and then this is a rough shape or using light as a frame so it is a shape but it's less distinct than a tree here's two examples from me so this one has a focal point but you're using frames to accentuate it again as you get to become a better photo uh, photographer you're going to see that we use multiple elements of a great photo in the same image so here's framing you can go and shoot up through a cave at george washington and then here's man-made or architectural framing where you have the railing at Mount Rushmore, and then I've got it balanced between the amphitheater and the monument. Katie used natural framing in these photographs, whether you're using the branches of the tree, the foliage around the face of the cow or bull, and then you've got the willow leaves going around the subject, 
or leading lines and framing going around the subject over here. Trees, flowers, snow, and fog create endless possibilities for framing in nature. Katie took these photos using architectural framing, so either the fence hole, or you've got uh, gaps in the railing, or you've got a window or a door frame, and then also lines leading you here. So she's done a great job with these architectural framing photographs. Frank used framing naturally last week when he did a photo of health and well-being. So here he is being mindful, and he framed himself really well with the window. This is a really creative use of framing by Jordan who took control of the environment. She has a Polaroid picture that creates a frame and then she has this image mirror it to create balance. And then she also has leading lines where the road leads you toward the rest of the photograph. Excellent job with creative use of framing and leading lines in this photo by Jordan. Here you see Carly using framing to naturally show the chicken in this photograph by the fence. And then you have Jillian using architectural framing to focus in on the dugout and not anything else around here. So she purposely put the dugout in the middle of her frame, which is the kind of things you should be looking at too. So here's some tips to do the best job with these things possible. First of all, the number one regret or thing that most people are saying they want to improve is to pay more attention to the background and the lighting of the photograph. So this is your chance to not make your photo look messy or cramped. You're gonna pay attention to the whole composition of it if you can do it this time. Please know that the framing doesn't need to go all the way around the frame of the photograph. So you can break the frame or have it just on two thirds of the photograph. And you need to make sure that your photo creates extra visual interest other than just your focal point. So pay attention to the things around or leading to or surrounding your photograph, your focal point. So it's health and humor. It's well-being in the time of COVID-19. Have some fun with this one. If you have any questions or want me to take a look at your picture, I'm always here to do that. And I hope that each week you feel like you're becoming a better photographer as you participate in these challenges. I can't wait to see what you come up with on Thursday night.